Welcome to Nadat and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barreto. Let's take a look at the headlines. The new traffic plan for Woodbrook and St. James is implemented. Patients in Trinidad and Tobago will now have radiological protection during medical exposures. And 19-year-old Kishon Walcott captures gold in the javelin at the 14th IWAF World Junior Championships in Barcelona. Thank you for joining us. The new experimental traffic plan for Woodbrook and St. James has been implemented. News 4 spoke to an official from the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure to find out more about this new traffic scheme. More from Gregory McBurney. This is what Traggett Road would have looked like on Friday. But today it's a totally different experience for drivers with the implementation of the experimental traffic plan in Woodbrook, St. James and environs. Now a lot of drivers and motorists aren't yet accustomed to the changes. So we here at Channel 4 had a chance to speak with Mr. Adande Pigot, Transport Planner with the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, to explain to us a bit more what are the major changes that will be implemented as of today. The major changes will include Chargrid Road. We're going to a westerly direction between Long Circular Road and Roxy Roundabout. It will be a two-way traffic. Then you have one-way flow from Long Circular Road to George Cabral Street. Arapita Avenue, one way east, into Park Street. Drivers can utilize this roadway to choose whether to go into Beatham Highway or Eastern Main Road through Piccadilly. It's creating a natural bypass from Rison Road. Mr. Piggott explains why the changes were made to the selected streets, in particular the major arteries serving Woodbrook and environs. The reason why we have it in the directions that we have where Traggard Road will be going west and Arapita coming east is because if Traggard Road was coming in, it would have bottleneck at Richmond Street. Arapita Avenue has Park Street continuing in and Park Street will be able to absorb the increased volumes that will be coming from Arapita Avenue. So that's the reason why we have it in the direction that we have in it there. In addition to that, we've been conducting a number of studies and we look at the, the results from the traffic counts that we collected on our, on our studies. Our Peter Avenue, we have 70% of the vehicles going in an easterly direction and 30% of the vehicles going in a westerly direction. And on Traggard Road and Western Main Road, it's 60% of the vehicles going in a westerly direction and 40% goes in an easterly direction. And this is the reason why we have the, the, the flows on, in, this, in these directions. Mr. Piggott says that while traffic congestion may ease up, motorists should still observe the speed limits and drive safely. Well, the motoring public, we like them to um, pay attention to the speed limit, 50 kilometers per hour on these major roadways. We are not trying to create a fast lane here. We also want the motoring public to be very courteous to the pedestrians who like to utilize the pedestrian crosswalks. Please stop for them and give them an opportunity to pass. In addition to that, we would like all motoring publics to respect and obey the traffic signs that are out there to ensure that we have a smooth flow of traffic to benefit the greater public. So remember, before you hit your favorite spot on the avenue, the new experimental traffic plan is in place. And my advice to you, check out the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure website, mowt.gov.tt. You can also give them a call, 625-1225 or check out the YouTube account. On the YouTube account, they actually have a video of how the experimental traffic scheme will be running. Head across to YouTube. It's M-O-W-I-G-O-V-T-T is the keyword you're searching for. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Meanwhile, transportation planner Nande Pigott, with the aid of a visual representation of the new traffic flows, outlines how the plan will work. Motors will... When they come to Movie Town or to the National Stadium area here, they will have a choice whether to stay on to Rison Road or go up to Marval Parkway into Arapita Avenue, where they'll be traveling in an easterly direction into Park Street to come into downtown Port of Spain. The motoring public here can utilize Tragridge Road, will be going in a westerly direction onto 
up to Roxy Roundabout, where they can go around the roundabout and go further west into St. James in a westerly direction. I would like to note that between Long Circular Road and Roxy Roundabout, you will have a two-way flow of traffic between Long Circular Road and George Cabral Street by St. Mary's Church, you will have a traffic moving in a westerly direction onto the ramp to go out to Coco Reed. Arapita Avenue is now one way heading into Port of Spain, but these are not the only changes motorists will encounter. Other changes include Damien Street by One Road Book Place will be moving in a southerly direction into Warren Street to get into Taylor Street to get access into Arpita Avenue. Colville Street will be a one-way north, that's by La Perouse Cemetery, one-way north direction up to Tragrit Road. French Street, at the intersection of French Street and Maraval Road on Tragrit Road, French Street will be a southerly direction between Tragrit Road and Arpita Avenue onto Rison Road. A number of major streets will remain unchanged, including Cipriani Boulevard, Stanmore Avenue, Victoria Avenue, and Mukarapa Road. Streets in St. Clair also remain untouched. Drivers are once again advised to read street signs carefully and follow the directions of the police and the traffic wardens who are out in their numbers to assist the public. More news after the break. Stay with us. Honoring and respecting the elderly begins with you and me. And in the event of a disaster, your support before, during and after will be critical to their well-being. Build a support team where each member will have a specific task. Your team must include someone who is within easy reach of the elderly person. Make an evacuation plan and practice your plan. Stock up on special caregiving items such as incontinence items, cleaning and sanitizing supplies. Have on hand a minimum of two weeks supply of all essential medications. In the event of a disaster, accessing medication may become difficult. Keep testing and insulin supplies and do not require refrigeration for diabetics. Secure all medical supplies in a clean, waterproof, easy-to-carry container. Keep a list of medication, caregiving instruction, doctor's names and contact information. In case an elderly person is relocated to a shelter, this information is vital to their continued care. Dehydration is a serious health problem for older adults. Store at least one gallon per person per day. Store at least three days' worth. Consider special dietary needs when stocking up on food supplies. Safeguard important documents and provide an ID bracelet or necklace to persons with special needs, such as persons with Alzheimer's disease. Remember, disaster readiness and preparedness begins with you and me. A message from the Ministry of National Security, Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management. Thank you for staying with us. Age should not be a bar to the performance of functions and duties. The sentiments of the Honorable Prime Minister Kamla Pesad Bissasa, who revealed that 45-year-old financial economist Jawala Rambaran has been appointed the new governor of the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. The Prime Minister made the announcement during a news briefing following a special cabinet meeting in Tobago. The news of Jawala Rambaran's appointment ended days of speculation as to who would fill the prestigious post. Several prominent economists, including Trinidad and Tobago Exchange Commission Chairman Dr. Patrick Watson and UWI Senior Economist Dr. Denisha Mahabir, had been shortlisted as possible candidates. Mr. Rambaran, who is named among the top 50 alumni at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies for his contribution to economic development, is expected to play a critical role in facilitating the growth and development process in Trinidad and Tobago. His actions will also determine if the country's economy continues to grow. The Prime Minister described the new central bank governor as having sound leadership, negotiation and strategic planning skills and a graduate of executive economic and financial training programs from Harvard Kennedy School of Government, from the IMF Institute and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. 
The new central bank governor says he is elated at the appointment and looks forward to serving the country in his new capacity with the intent to build on the work that was done by his predecessor, Ewart Williams, as it relates to strengthening the monetary and financial stability in Trinidad and Tobago. Vina Barath, News 4. In other news, patients in Trinidad and Tobago will now have radiological protection during medical exposures. This from the Honorable Health Minister, Dr. Fuad Khan, who is revealing that this country is now a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA. He was speaking during a post-cabinet briefing in Tobago. The International Atomic Energy Agency is a body that provides international safeguards against the misuse of nuclear technology and promotes nuclear safety, including radiation protection and nuclear security standards and their implementation. The health minister says this country has made a huge leap of success in the medical sector in attaining membership with the IAEA. We have basically come a very long way and now that we, have, we are able to have membership with the IEA, I think the radiation protection and radiation action in this country will take a different direction. Dr. Khan says the cost of membership for the year will be $1.5 million. He explained membership is usually $1 million. However, he says the additional $500,000 will go towards a fund for enabling developing countries such as Trinidad and Tobago to tap into more resources of the IAEA. The health minister informs that last year cabinet had passed the ionizing radiation regulations, the IRR, which had been sent to the attorney general for drafting. He reveals that the draft will now be attached to the Occupational Health and Safety Act for the protection of workers. Dr. Khan is also outlining the many benefits this country will enjoy as a result of the membership. It will ensure appropriate use of ionizing radiation. It will also strengthen the national regulatory infrastructure for the control of radiation sources. It will strengthen and update technical capabilities for the protection of the health and safety of workers exposed through occupation to ionizing radiation. We will have radiological protection of patients during medical exposures. It will strengthen the national infrastructure and regulatory framework for safe management of radioactive waste in Latin American and Caribbean member countries. It will also strengthen the national systems for preparedness and response to nuclear and radiological emergencies. And it will support radiation protection infrastructure through education and training. The IAEA Assistance Mission had visited Trinidad and Tobago earlier this year with its specific terms of reference being to assess patients who were exposed to radiation over an 18-month period in 2009 during treatment at the Brian Lara Cancer Treatment Center. The agency conducted a formal accident report to determine the consequences or potential consequences from a point of view of protection or safety from any unintended event, including operating errors, equipment failures and other mishaps. Vina Barath, News 4. News 4 continues after the break. It's like no other place on earth, Paria Springs and rainforests that sing, and the blue seas and skies. But what makes Trinidad and Tobago really special is our people, our fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers. We're aunts and uncles, neighbors and cousins, and we are officers of a new police service as well. A new service of the 21st century the police service of tomorrow. It's different from the old model and what it is really is a deployment model. So it's how we deploy our resources, how we utilize our resources for their maximum effectiveness. With new tools, new technology, new leadership and a new sense of dedication and service to all our people. In the coming weeks, we'll air a series of half-hour specials to show you how we have been re-equipped with new computers, new communication systems, and new rapid response teams, so we can respond with speed and precision.
The sport company of Trinidad and Tobago congratulates 19-year-old Kishon Walcott for his superior effort in capturing gold in the javelin at the 14th IAAF World Junior Championships in Barcelona, Spain. The Toko native launched the javelin 78.64 meters on the final throw of the competition, beating athletes from Argentina and South Africa into second and third place respectively. The Honorable Anil Roberts, Minister of Sport, who presented Kishon with two IAAF certified Gill Athletics javelins just before he left for, for Spain, said of the achievement, quote, it's a great incentive to all athletes participating in field events, which are often overlooked. The preparation is rigorous, but the rewards just as great. Kishon, as well as his parents, coach and support staff, should be justifiably proud of this historic gold medal for Trinidad and Tobago. The dominant performance also signals a warning to his opponents in London. Kishon has registered his name on the list of Trinidad and Tobago athletes who have medaled at the World Junior Championships, a list that includes Atto Bolden, Renny Kwao, Jamal James and Janil Belil. Kishon, however, has gone a step further by becoming the first field athlete from Trinidad and Tobago to win gold in this event. In other sport news, netball fans turned out on the weekend in their numbers when the America's Federation of Netball Association Championships jumped off at the Jean Pierre Sports Complex in Port of Spain. Following an opening ceremony which included the parade of teams, Trinidad and Tobago sounded a warning when they faced Guyana as the competition started. Wayne Cunningham has the details. An impressive crowd was on hand to witness the opening of the America's Federation of Netball Association Championships. The patrons were treated to a parade of teams, with the Calypso girls being well received. There was also some local entertainment on show. Mr. Ashwin Creed, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Sport, welcomed all teams to the tournament. On behalf of the government and the Ministry of Sport, we welcome you, the participating, the participating team to Trinidad and Tobago, Canada, Bermuda. Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, Guyana, Grenada, and the USA. And wish you have an enjoyable stay in this beautiful Twin Island Republic. I'm sure that you're all are eager to compete for the top position of this highly anticipated, thrilling, and exciting tournament. To our Calypso girls, I'm sure that you too are prepared to defend your title. As the games begin and continue, I wish all nine teams every success. Mr. Creed then invokes some memories of our proudest moment in the sport of netball. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that this tournament is timely as it comes at a time when we are proudly celebrating 50 years of independence in Trinidad and Tobago. One can only recall 33 years ago in 1979 at the World Championship when our national team won jointly with Australia. Our national team comprising Jean Pierre, Peggy Castaneda, Cheryl Peters, Jennifer Frank, Marcia Dimsoy, Janet Bailey, Ingrid Blackman, and Barbara Challenger and others. Brought glory to Trinidad to Bay one to the region. These women gave to the world a style of that board that even today reflects our own rhythm and flair. I am sounding a warning, netballers, we must return to this position. Then it was on to the games. In the first match of the competition, Grenada faced the United States, and the Americans jumped out to an early lead. Grenada then bounced back with some inspired play to tie up the scores. Unfortunately for the Spice Girls, the USA was too strong and managed to eke out a 41-37 victory. The feature match on the night turned out to be a no contest as Trinidad and Tobago completely outplayed Guyana. The Calypso girls were just too big and too fast for the Guyanese and by the end of the first quarter, the match was over as a contest. 24-1 the score at that point. Goal shoot Anastasia Wilson was the main destroyer under the net scoring a whopping 88 points from 99 attempts. She did not need any help, but got some nonetheless from Joelisa Cooper, who scored 11 from 12 tries. 
and Janelle Barker 5 from 8. As TNT opened the tournament strong with a 104 to 10 victory. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. News 4 continues after the break. We are reporting from communities across the country. People are calling Nalis Libraries their library. Tell me, why is Nalis your library? My library is where I can have fun learning. My library is helping me earn better grades with online research resources. My library is my gateway to the world of information. My library is providing access to the differently able. As a visually impaired person, I can envision limitless possibilities. My library is making my world truly worldwide with free internet access. My library is helping me keep an eye on my health with access to the virtual health library via the Nalis website. Nalis is my library! Pot spoon throwdown of festival rolled into the East Coast community of Mayaro last weekend. Local cooks came out to show their talents in the fusion of fish and coconut into delectable mouth-watering dishes. The Honorable Tourism Minister Stephen Cady's opening the event said it gave Mayaro a chance to display their rich heritage and influence on wider Trinidad and Tobago culture. All roads led to Mayaro recently as the pot spoon throwdown took to the east coast, home of chip chip and coconut. Culinary enthusiasts came out in their numbers to put forward their best dishes. Speaking at the event, Minister of Tourism Stephen Cadiz says such events can only highlight Trinidad and Tobago's diverse heritage. He adds that under his watch as Minister of Tourism, he intends to put forward the tourism market and give it the attention it deserves. You know, there were two ministries uh, traditionally in Trinidad and Tobago that were always put on the back burner. One was agriculture and one was tourism. And here it is now, this administration sees first agriculture as being a primary ministry. Primary ministry, we have to have food security in this country. And now tourism as being one of the central pillars of the economy. And it is the, the it is the, the in the Ministry of Tourism, we intend to make tourism a main part of this economy. So we are very fortunate that Trinidad and Tobago possesses a great deal of both natural and cultural resources and attractions that are reflective of our multi-ethnic heritage. MP for the area, Winston Peters, in welcoming patrons to the Eastern Village, said Miaro was much more than a fishing village and commended the initiative as one that held the potential to further develop tourism in the Miaro Rio Claro district. The niche, this niche market initiative is also about building a platform for community tourism and the myriads of spin-off benefits such as culinary tourism, entrepreneurial development, standard training, marketing strategies and other tremendous opportunities for cottage-based industries. Whilst the government and its agencies would continue to create the forum for you to market your skills, talent and products, you must embrace and maximize these opportunities in order to build creativity and innovation in your respective skill set. Meanwhile, Minister Kiddies is urging citizens to take pride in their environment as too often litter is seen at tourist spots in and around Trinidad. When you drive along the roads in Tobago and the beaches in Tobago, there is no litter. And I do not know what has happened in Trinidad and Tobago, but all of a sudden, we start seeing it litter. We start seeing it everywhere. We refuse to pick up after, after we have a wonderful time at the beach. We just refuse to pick up the litter, put it in a garbage bag and carry it home. 
So I appeal to people when you're using the pristine beaches of Manzanilla and Mayaro that we do, we, we, we remember how we met the environment and to please leave it just as how we left it. Winners of the competition will participate in the upcoming Taste TNT Festival where local chefs will get the opportunity to showcase their tasty creations to international culinary icons. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.